everyone, I'm Emily Campbell, Associate Director of Content Marketing at Siege Media, and today I'll be talking through some tips for how to make your blog unique. At Siege, we've worked with countless clients in many different industries, so we've really learned what works to create a blog that resonates with users and your target customers. The first recommendation that we have is to think about customizable CSS classes that you can add to your blog so that you're creating elements that can be used across multiple different posts. A few recommendations that we like to point to are things like charts and graphs. NerdWallet does a great job of implementing these sort of seamless charts and elements that look really cohesive across different posts on their site. We also recommend implementing a structure for pull quotes so that you can incorporate those throughout your article. We also always like to recommend incorporating branded social buttons. Sounds like a small recommendation, but we just find that having that extra polish can really help make your blog stand out and look cohesive from a branding perspective. Our second tip is to add a last updated element to your blog post. And this is great if you are a brand that is going after a lot of queries that rely on content freshness and need to be updated regularly. Because when you have the last updated element on your blog post, a user automatically knows how new the content is and can therefore understand how trustworthy it is and how relevant it might be for them. So there's more opportunity for them to engage with the content and likely read through the post. Once you've implemented these elements, we also recommend thinking about how you want to incorporate author bios into your blog structure. This is something that we've touched on more in depth in other videos and blog posts as well, but worth mentioning as part of your overall blog direction because it's just really key to think through your strategy for how you want to incorporate and highlight who's contributing to your blog. There's a lot of different elements that you can think about or how to showcase the writers. We really like to recommend incorporating maybe a small headshot at the top of the post with a short blurb about the author, and then potentially incorporating a longer bio at the bottom of the post once someone's read through and engaged with the content. But there's lots of different options for how you can best tackle this on your site. Something that we're seeing a lot that I really like is when blogs add read times to the top of articles or incorporate a sticky nav bar. And this is great because it gives the user a sense of how long they'll need to engage with the content and also gives them a stronger likelihood of remaining engaged with your post. I know Everly Well, for example, on their blog homepage incorporates a summary of how long it might take a user to read each blog post. And for me, that's just helpful because I'll know, is this gonna be a quick article that I'll just skim through or a more in-depth guide that I'll wanna sit down and drink with a cup of coffee. So adding in that element really makes your content a little bit more engaging and is more likely to keep the user on the page. Same goes for the sticky nav bar. It's essentially just a long bar that shows you how far into the post you are. And this is great for brands that do a lot of long form content because I know when you're reading something long, if you don't know how much longer it's gonna last, there's a higher chance that you'll bounce off and go read something a little bit shorter or just go on your merry way. I also recommend thinking through your strategy for stock photography on your blog. I'm sure that we've all seen sites that just incorporate overly stocky imagery like lady eating a salad and laughing. And that type of content structure just doesn't feel elevated and premium. So while we understand that brands might be using stock photos, I recommend thinking about a scalable strategy so that those images feel a little bit more premium on your site. A really easy tip here is coming up with some sort of custom treatment that you can add to each hero image or just any stock photography on your site. So for example, maybe it's a custom border or color tint that will just make everything look a little bit more cohesive and really align with your overall brand direction. And then the last thing you'll want to think about is your comment section. Do you want to have one? Are you prepared to manage that content section? This is something that is really up to each individual brand's discretion, but it's important to think about if you have the 
manpower of a community manager, someone who will be responsible for responding to comments and engaging, keeping things from feeling a little bit spammy. So that's important to consider when evaluating whether you even want to add that into your structure. We also like to ask if, you know, could social media be your forum for engaging with readers? That's an option as well if you don't want to put the resources towards having someone manage your comment section on your blog. And you may not even be getting comments, so kind of running through that checklist when evaluating if this is worth your time is just really key when evaluating if this is part of your strategy and something that will help make your blog stand out. Thanks so much for tuning in to my tips for how to make your blog stand out and feel unique. I would love to hear if you all have tips for what's worked for your blog. Feel free to drop a comment below and let us know what you think. Thanks so much.